Let's keep going. We're on problem number 41 of Physics GRE, GR0177. Maxwell's equations can be written in the form shown below. If magnetic charge exists and if it is conserved, which of these equations will have to be changed? Magnetic charge equals magnetic monopoles. So if magnetic monopoles exist, then Maxwell's equations would be symmetrical. There would be a magnetic charge, so 2 would look like 1 with magnetic charge density of del times the dot product of B uh, times rho m over uh, u of B. And now if magnetic charge was conserved, uh, you would need a magnetic current density, something like EOJM, uh, similar to the electric current density in 4. So 2 and 3 would both need to change, and that is answer E. Number 42. Three wire loops in an observer are positioned as shown in the figure above. From the observer's point of view, a current I flows counterclockwise in the middle loop, which is moving towards the observer with a velocity V. Loops A and B are stationary. This same observer would notice that so anytime a current is generated by a change in the electric or magnetic field, the generated electromotive force, EMF, will oppose this change in, the direction, in direction or magnitude. As the ring moves towards ring A, uh, it increases the field in ring A, and the EMF induced in A will oppose this change with the opposite current, counterclockwise. For ring B, its field is decreasing as the middle loop moves away from it. The EMF induced will oppose this decrease, so it will have the same current as the middle ring, i.e. counterclockwise. And so that is answer C. Number 43. The components of the orbital angular momentum operator L equals LX, LY, LZ. Satisfy the following commutation relations. Lx comma Ly equals Ih bar Lz. Ly comma Lz equals Ih bar Lx. Lz comma Lz, uh, Lz comma Lx equals Ih bar Ly. What is the value of the commutator Lx Ly comma Lz? So we're going to use the commutation relation. Ab comma C equals A times the quantity B comma C plus the quantity A comma C times B where in our problem A equals LX, B equals LY, C equals LZ. So LX, LY, comma, LZ is going to equal LX uh, times the quantity LY, comma, LZ plus the quantity LX, comma, LZ, that quantity times LY. And now we're going to use the commutation relation given by the problem where LY, comma, LZ equals IH bar LX and LZ, comma, LX equals IH bar LY. And so there, and because LZ comma LX equals IH bar LY, therefore LX comma LZ equals minus IH bar LY. So LX times the quantity IH bar LX plus minus IH bar LY times the quantity LY. That is going to equal IH bar LX squared minus IH bar LY squared, and that is going to simply equal IH bar times the quantity LX squared minus LY squared, and that is answer D. Number 44, the energy eigenstates for a particle of mass m in a box of length l have wave functions phi n over x equals the square root of 2 over l times the quantity sine, uh, sine of the quantity n pi x over l, and energies e to the n equals n squared pi squared h bar squared over 2 ml squared, where n equals 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 at time t equals 0. The particle is in a state described as follows. Uh, the wave function at t equals 0 equals 1 over the square root of 14 times phi 1 plus 2 phi 2 plus 3 phi 3. Which of the following is a possible result of a measurement of energy for the state um, psi. So the energy is given as e to the n equals n squared pi squared h bar squared over 2 ml squared. Uh, the energy must be a square multiple of e1 because of n squared where n equals 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. We are not 
looking for the expectation value. We are looking for allowed energy states. So let's plug in values of n to see what works. Uh, for n equals 1, 1 squared equals e to the 1. For n equals 2, 2 squared equals 4 e, uh, e1. Uh, for n equals 3, 3 squared equals 9 e1. And for n equals 4, 4 squared equals 16 e1. Uh, only choice D works, and that's for n equals 3. So that's our answer. Number 45. Let n uh, represent the normalized nth energy eigenstate of the one-dimensional harmonic oscillator uh, h times the ket of n equals h bar w times the quantity n plus one-half ket n. If psi... Uh, is a normalized ensemble that can be expanded as a linear combination where psi, the ket of psi, equals 1 over square root of 14 ket 1 minus 2 over square root of 14 ket 2 plus 3 over the square root of 14 ket 3 of the eigenstates. What is the expectation value of the energy operator in this ensemble state? So the expectation value is equal to the sum of the ket terms, uh, each multiplied by its respective eigenvalue squared. For each given energy level, we have uh, n, uh, the ket 1, is h bar w times the quantity 1 plus 1 half equals 3 halves h bar w. n equals 2 equals h bar w times 2 plus 1 half equals 5 halves h bar w n equals 3 is h bar w 3 plus 1 halves equals 7 halves h bar w so, uh, so with some addition and some algebra we can get the expectation value to equal 86 over 28 h bar w uh, we then have to reduce that to 43 over h bar w and that uh, gives us i'm sorry 43 over 14 h bar w and that gives us answer b 46, a free particle with initial kinetic energy E and de Broglie wavelength lambda enters a region in which it has potential energy V. What is the particle's new de Broglie wavelength? So our kinetic energy equals P squared over 2M, where P, the momentum, equals the square root of 2M times KE, the kinetic energy. The de Broglie wavelength lambda equals H over P. Initially, the particle is in a region with no potential energy, and it only has kinetic energy. And the Lagrangian is L equals kinetic energy minus potential energy, and it's going to equal the kinetic energy. So lambda equals the initial lambda wavelength equals H over the square root of 2M times the kinetic energy. Um, when the particle enters the region with potential energy, the Lagrangian is L equals KE minus PE. So the final wavelength equals H over the square root quantity 2M times uh, the KE minus the PE. So our lambda final is going to equal our lambda initial times the quantity a lambda final over a lambda initial. So our lambda final is going to equal our lambda times the quantity H over 2M times the quantity KE minus PE, that quantity 2M KE minus PE square root. And then that whole quantity divided by 2mke, that quantity 2mke square root. So lambda final is going to equal 1 over e minus v, uh, e minus v square root. And then that whole quantity divided by 1 over square root of e. So lambda final is going to equal lambda times e minus v raised to the minus 1 half power times the quantity uh, e to the 1 half, so the square root of e. Lambda final, we're going to do some algebra here. Go down, go down. Lambda final equals lambda times e over the quantity e minus v, that whole quantity, square root, the whole quantity being e divided by e minus v. And then lambda final equals lambda times 1 over the quantity 1 minus quantity v over e. And then that whole quantity 1 over 1 minus v divided by e, that whole quantity square root. And then lambda final is going to equal lambda times the uh, quantity 1 minus v over e, that quantity mi 1 minus v over e to raised to the minus 1 half. And that is answer E. 47. A sealed and thermally insulated container of total volume V is divided into two equal volumes by an impermeable wall. The left half of the container is initially occupied by n moles of an ideal gas at temperature T. Which of the following gives the change in entropy of the system when the wall is suddenly removed and the gas expands to fill the entire volume? 
So, no work is done on the gas, energy remains constant, and the change in internal energy is zero, so we can apply our fundamental thermodynamic equation, where zero equals du equals TDS minus PDV, so we know TDS equals PDV. Well, ds equals p over t times dv, and the integral of ds equals s equals p over t times the integral of dv. So from the ideal gas law, we know pv equals nrt, where uh, p over t equals nr over v. So s is going to equal nr times the integral of v raised to the minus 1 dv. Uh, so s is going to equal nr times ln of the final volume over the initial volume. And so s is going to equal nr ln 2 over 1 equals nr ln 2. And that is answer B. Forty-eight. A gaseous mixture of O2, uh, molecular mass 32 uh, atomic units, and N2, molecular mass 28 atomic units, is maintained at constant temperature. What is the ratio of VRMS of N2 over VRMS of O2 of the root mean square speeds of the molecules? So VMRMS equals the square root of 3 kT over M. Constant temperature, so only molecular mass is different. So uh, the velocity of N2 is proportional to 1 over 28, that quantity square root, where the velocity of O2 is proportional to 1 over 32, that quantity square root. And so the uh, proportion of the velocity of N2 over the velocity of O2 equals this 1 over the square root of 28, uh, 1 over 28 square root divided by 1 over 32 square root. And so V, uh, RMS of N2 over V of O2 equals the square root of 32 over the square root of 28 equals the square root of 8 over 7, and that is answer C. 49. In a Maxwell-Boltzmann system with two states of energies, uh, E and 2E respectively, and a degeneracy of 2 for each state, the partition function is... So the Maxwell-Boltzmann partition function, z equals the sum over i, uh, g to the i, e to the negative ei over kt, where gi is the number of different states corresponding to a particular energy level, is known as the degree of degeneracy of the level. gi equals 2 because two states each have degeneracy of 2 per the problem. So z is going to equal equals the 2 times the quantity e to the negative e divided by kt plus e to the minus 2e divided by kt, where we summed over i energy states, and that is answer E. Number 50. At 20 degrees Celsius, a pipe open at both ends resonates at a frequency of 440 hertz. At what frequency does the same pipe resonate on a particularly cold day when the speed of sound is 3% slower, no, I'm sorry, 3% lower than it would be at 20 degrees Celsius? So our frequency equals our velocity over our wavelength. So frequency times wavelength equals velocity. 3% slower means 0 0.97 times the initial velocity divided by the wavelength equals the final frequency. The initial frequency equals 440 hertz, and the final frequency equals, therefore, 0 0.97 times 440 hertz. And do some algebra and get the pen and paper out. You will see that equals 427 hertz. That is answer B. Okay, we are halfway. I'll see you on the... Other side of solutions to physics GRE GR0177.